Hello, I'm Dr. Weber from the University of Alberta, and I'm so excited to meet up with one of my former students, Major. And uh, Major and I have had a long history. Uh, how many years ago has it been since I worked with you? About 14 years that ago? So that would be 13 years. 13, 13 years ago. So I was lucky to have you in my class. Um, um, it was quite an experience working with you. And at first, I really didn't know much about you. I didn't really understand some of the things you were struggling with. Um, this is my opportunity to really sit down and chat with you about what was really going on with you, with your life, with your experiences. Because, you know, sometimes teachers get really, really busy and the kid comes into a class and you know that they have issues and challenges and then you're kind of like a swimmer. You've got all these other kids with the other issues and challenges. And I remember you were with one of my other students who was hard of hearing. And you and this other student didn't use sign language. But I used an interpreter. Do you remember that? Uh, yes, yes, I think so. Yeah. I think Agarad uh, was the interpreter, I'm not sure. His name was Lee Agarad. He's yeah. retired now. He's retired. Yes. Um, so he would facilitate the communication between you and there's other students because I couldn't understand there's other students. And I sometimes have difficulty understanding you. So you were really good working with the interpreter, you know. And from what I remember, I taught you English. Yes, English. Yes. English uh, class. English when I was in grade nine and ten. Yeah, mm. grade nine. Yeah, and I was maybe grade ten too. Maybe a little bit. Maybe the first semester of grade ten because I remember. I yeah, switched yeah. Over to another English that, class uh, during the second semester, but yeah, I don't remember too much English. That was a long time ago. Oh yeah, a long time ago. And right now, Major, I'm teaching a class called Educational Psychology 301, and it is on inclusive education. Now, you and I know from experience what this really means for both of us, because we both have differences, right? And so what I wanted to do first is to give you an opportunity to describe yourself, some of the challenges that you've had with, in terms of schooling. We can get into the, the, the deeper parts of what it was like for you at Tom Collegiate you know, the other schools, and again, at Manaimo. But can you just kind of give me um, a general explanation, a description of who you are? Well, you know, I, when I was in, in my freshman year, uh, you know, I entered the ESP program, which was, I'm not yeah. sure what ESP stands for exactly, but yeah, it was called it was called environmental support program. Yeah. yeah environmental for... support program. And it was kind of like a catch all play for people who were struggling with mental illnesses or people who had um autism or Asperger's or um, emotional behavioral issues. It was, it was kind of like a a very vague term. And then it changed later, I think after you left, it changed to supportive environment program. So it just flipped the acronyms around. But anyway. But I, I have Asperger's syndrome, so I think that's one of the reasons why I qualify for the, for the program and a little bit of learning disability. I'm not, I think just a, yeah, yeah, learning disability, I think that these things. 
Yeah. So and you just were... to summarize all of this, the major you have Asperger, you receive special services in the high school in Regina. Yes. And you were in my class. And you worked with a EA who happened to also be a sign language interpreter. And that's how you ended up in my class. So yes. we've gotten that out of the way. So can you tell me about the services that you got from being in that program? You got tutorial support. What else did you get from being in the program in Regina? Uh, I also got, you know, what, just, uh, uh, did, did you mention tutorial support already or? Yeah, like did you like you went to all of your classes, then you came back, and you got a tutorial support where someone sat with you and helped you with your homework or yes. worked on certain things. Yes, most of the time. Yeah, almost all the time, actually, I think. Right, and that was for like one hour a day, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, but, that's right. You know, uh, I, uh, I also remember uh, being in the ESP room, you know, uh, it was kind of like, you know, uh, Ms. Brevecki and like all the other teachers who ran the program with her kind of created like a social environment for me to, you know, get along with people who were struggling with, you know, uh, disabilities and uh, I remember there were times when, like, you know, I could not, uh, you know, uh, go, uh, you know, uh, leave the school or, you know, uh, or leave the classroom. I mean, because, you know, uh, these, the, the ESP program, they were looking after everyone. So, therefore, like, if I, something happened to me it was you know uh, their responsibility you know it was the responsibility of uh you know uh, the teachers there to look after me uh so how did that feel major did, did you like that did you feel like you were kind of you no know, uh barricaded in in your yes, yes, so, yes a little bit uh, a little bit, and and at first I, you know, um, I wanted freedom, you know, uh, just to, uh, you know, go out and you know, uh, spend time with other, you know, uh, with other people in in my grade, like who weren't in the ESP program, to like socialize with them, and you know, uh, go go out for a slurpee runner or, or something with them. But, uh, I, you know, uh, the, the teachers in the, in the ESP program, they recommended that I didn't do that. So, so they tried to pressure me in order in, into staying in, in the ESP room because it was their responsibility to look after me. So, and, did, did you ever know why they did that? Do you understand why, or did they yes. tell you why you had to stay in that classroom all day? They pretty much just said they're you're responsible for me, and they're not responsible for everyone for for anyone else who wasn't in the ESP program. So what? If, so can you tell me if you can how that made you feel? Um, and it, it made me feel left out from, you know, uh, from the open world. It's about like you were overly protected. Yeah, overly protected. Mm -hmm. You know, Major, I remember you at that time. I think you were really struggling with some of the social aspects of being in the school environment. I remember you feeling very hurt 
that you didn't have any friends or that you were concerned that certain people that you wanted to be friends with weren't really very friendly with you. That's what I remember, but maybe I've got that wrong. Have I got it wrong? No, no, you're you're exactly right. Um, basically, um, the friends who weren't in the ESP program, you know, uh, they weren't very well to the ESP. They did not understand that uh, that I really needed, you know, a friend to hang out with because I was lonely. And pretty much most of them just saw me as someone who had, who was different, who had, uh, you know, uh, who had Asperger's uh, or had a learning system disability and they and I felt like they did not want to be associated with, with someone like that. The, the the people who weren't in the ESP program. The the people who were in the ESP program they they understood. They sort of understood, but you know, people outside of the ESP program they yeah, they took every advantage uh to make fun of me and to bully me every opportunity they got. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that happen. And I'm curious, I'm curious about something major. When you were inside that ESP classroom, you had teachers there that understood what you were like and understood you as a person. Did you ever really develop a sense of what it meant to be a person with Asperger's? Did you really get a sense of how your brain functions, how you, how, how you think? Did you learn anything about it when you were not in that really, program? I was, uh, not really, because to be honest with you, I was ashamed of that. I was ashamed that I had Asperger's. So, you know, I, you know, for most of the time, you know, around high school, you know, I kept wondering, you know, why can't I be normal like everyone else? And I tried to be normal like everyone else, but that obviously wasn't working. So, I mean, because I spent most of my time trying to be normal, I didn't really think of how, you know, Asperger's affected me. So nobody really talked to you about it when you were in that program, right? No one ever sat down with you and said, you no know, major, you have Asperger's, and Asperger's mean this, 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 and this, and you know what? It's okay. It's just your brain functions differently. Did anybody sit down with you and say those things? Not really, really. Because I think most of the teachers were afraid that they were going to put me down in some way and and i think you know they couldn't really think of a way to like put it to me nicely you know well, I mean, because you know uh, i felt that they were probably afraid that, that like if they said something that triggered me you know i would get you know overly depressed or something well that's why they never really had that talk with me yeah uh, well, that's an important thing, isn't it? it that, that would have helped quite a bit, right? In that program in Regina, that might have helped you to be a little bit more comfortable, a little bit safer, a little bit more accepting of yourself. Because when, when you accept yourself, then other people accept you more easily. But if you're kind of like, oh, you know, I don't like I'm, there's something really horribly wrong with me and people pick that up and they go, oh yeah, there's something really horribly wrong with them. You know what I mean? Like it's it coming from within yourself. And so I'm really curious about what happened when you moved to Nanaimo because you became almost like a different person. Yes, Can you explain uh, what happened? Well, this took about uh, over one year. It, you know, it took me about over one year to, to, 
to make friends. And, you know, 2010 was when, you know, so same, was when everything started p p picking up for me. So 2010 was the year when, you know, uh, when I started making some, you know, people started making, you know, plans to go out to movies with me. And heck, even one person agreed to be my prom date, you know, in 2010. So 2010 was the year that things changed, really, because, like, like if I had attended high school at Tom, uh, you know, uh, in 2010, like, obviously no one would have been, been like, on me or, like, a uh, uh, me hang out with me, but, uh, you know, I, I think, I, I don't know, I, I think, you know, it might have to do with the fact that, you know, people here in British Columbia are a lot nicer or a little more accepting, or it could be an environment. Where, well, I mean, you think it's because they understood what it means to be an have Asperger? You think they understood it? Were they able to talk about it with you? Um, not really, but but they could see that I had Asperger's, like, you know, they could pick up the sign, yeah, yeah, and. But I'm telling you just to why they were more accepting than the people in Regina, the student body. I think that your teachers really cared about you. I think that we all were watching the struggling going on. And I have been in questions myself, like, why is this happening? I have some theories about it, but I'm just wondering, like, what, what was that different? Were they... Were those students more educated about Asperger's? Were there more acceptance of diversity? What? I think maybe acceptance and, and diversity, because they had, you know, at at the school I went to in in Nanaimo, it's, it's called Dover Bay Secondary. That's the high school I went to. They had an entire room full, you know, uh, de dedicated to people with learning disabilities or who were just disabled or ones who can't, you know, function properly. You know, they had a, they, a, an entire room dedicated to, you know, uh, to helping people like that with teachers and support to, you know, systems in, in place so i think that so measure with that i, I want to make sure i'm really clear here I, i've understood you clearly so that school was a special school only or didn't include other people who didn't have any disability was it like it, a mainstream it, school it, it included you know people who didn't have any disability at all but you know, oh okay I, okay so what I'm hearing you saying then is that when you were there in the Naimo, you had a much larger group who yes. had similar kinds of challenges like you had, right? Yes. Well, that probably makes a big difference because from what I remember in Regina, there were like a handful of people. And there were really serious, serious cases, right? And they were not really able to connect with anybody else in that program. Am I right about that? I think so. I think so. And, you know, um, yeah. I think, and I think that maybe what you're saying, I mean, and I'm on, I could be wrong, but you have more to choose from. You have more levels of, of ability. You have, you know, people who are very, severe, you know, with very severe challenges to very mild challenges, in a much larger group you could pick and choose. It's a critical mass issue, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm still friends with some of the people who I went to Dover Bay with, 
you know, today. Like, you know, us, you know, some of them actually celebrated my birthday with me last week. So, three of them actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> three of them went to Bill where they was. And they did not really, like, it did not really matter to them that I had as we, because they, I eventually opened up to them that. You know, I had Asperger's. You know, I made it clear with them, and um, you know, I, they they didn't seem to mind. You know, one thing that really strikes me about you is that because you have Asperger's, the sort of I always found myself wondering how much you were taking in in my classes, because when I was trying to teach you English. And you were very good. Your English was flawless. You had no problem with it. But you were very much into movies, and I was trying to get you into Shakespeare. And I kept scratching my head over this because, first of all, I had lost my voice for about a month or six weeks. Now, I don't know if you remember that. But I had to teach it through an interpreter. It was six weeks. No, no voice, in. and so here I was signing Shakespeare to you. And I thought, oh gosh, what a mess. It was a mess because you know how Shakespearean language can be very difficult. And I didn't know, I just really didn't get a sense of what you were picking up. But lo and behold, I think it was last summer, you texted me on Facebook Messenger. And we had this amazing discussion about Shakespeare. And you kept bringing up all the things that I had talked to. And I had even forgotten I had talked to you, but you remembered all this. And so that just sort of made something go off in my head about what it really means to be a very high functioning Asperger. You're really taking in a lot more than what you would necessarily relay back. You know what I'm saying? Yes, because I... here it was almost 11 years later, and I'm thinking, we're having the discussion about Shakespeare and he's talking about things he learned in my class. And, I, and then all that time, I thought, oh, like I did, a, I made a mess of it. But you know, at that time, you were not really able to sort of display that understanding, but you, but you had it. You were, it was in your head. It was all there. Do you find what? that happen sometimes? Well, you know, um, I have not told very many people this, but but at a young age, you know, my psychiatrist, my psychiatrist said that. One of my problems was that, like, you know, my, you know, I sort of act younger than my age sometimes. It could be my brain functioning or whatever. That was, you know, from a very early age. And, you know, I remember back in grade 10, I think it was, when... Well, I had like trouble functioning and paying attention. And, you know, there were days when I would not even bring my, you know, notebook to class or my backpack to class. And uh, that was a huge problem. So, you know. Yeah. But, you know, but you were retaining all of that knowledge, obviously. Yeah. You were. Because when you brought up the Shakespeare references in our conversation, it just blew me away as to how much of it you retained. And not only just retained it, you also applied it. Because you write these fabulous movie reviews and your development of, um, of understanding how movies work, how characters work, the level of metaphor, symbolism, all that stuff is becoming more and more sophisticated over time. Like your movie reviews are far cry from what you produce in Great Man, but that's pretty obvious, but you've honed that craft 
we have been able to develop very sophisticated analysis of Moody. And you're also able to have an accommodation uh, about Shakespeare and Sh some of the ideas in Shakespeare, you applied it to the Moody review. You know, your, your, um, your intellectual abilities are very, very strong. It's just really, really surprising because I think that what causes people to have prejudice against you because they don't see that right away. And I didn't until a few years ago. And I, I remember picking, holding my phone and I, and I showed my husband. I said, you know, this guy, he's amazing what he was able to do. You know, and that he retained all that information. Like we're both teachers, so we have a pretty good understanding of these things. So you really surprised me, Major. You really did. One of the things you taught me was that, uh, you know, for, you know, find inspiration that like speaks to you. And I remember, you know, uh, Riley. You know, when I was writing, you know, a number of screenplays two, yeah. three years ago, and, you know, my biggest problem was that, like, I tried to cater to what the audience wanted, you know, what other people wanted to see, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, uh, it was you who made me realize that I should write you know, something that speaks to me, you know, uh, that, you know, uh, something that I felt was, or something that inspired me, or, you know, uh, or something that, that I was passionate about, whereas uh, opposed to, 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 like, writing, uh, 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 writing a movie script that's, that others wanted to see, like, see, like, do what's, what spoke to me. Uh. And you know, it's so interesting because the the um the term atypical is really starting to take off in the film industry. For example, have you ever watched any of those Sherlock episodes now with Johnny Lee Jones? Uh, you should be watching Sherlock because he is Asperger's, definitely. He got a real problem with the way he can connect with the world and connect with people, but he's just brilliant in figuring out crime and criminals and who did what. But it's interesting because they he's now romantically involved with someone else who has asked These are very important topics. And you know, the other thing is there's also that uh, Netflix series called Atypical. I don't know if you. I don't think I've heard of it, but I should look it up. Uh, yeah, I think you should take a look because I think the, the writing skill that you have, you've honed it over the years, you've worked so hard at it, you've developed it, you've been so passionately engaged with movies and analyzing character and plot and language and the levels of imagery and, and um, things. I know you're really well able to develop those skills over time. Thank you. Yes, it, it, it took time, but, but I think as I grew older, you know, because I think when I was going to school in Regina, like I was 15, 16 years old, and I probably had the mind and then the brain and then something of a, t of a 10 year old, back then, I think maybe. But, you know, as I grew older and, and more mature, you know, I sort of, so my, my brain sort of matured as well. So, yeah. And you know that, I think in many, many ways, that's something that the students from my class need to understand. Because 
when when they talk to someone who has Asperger, there's all kinds of judgment that get leveled at them because of what we think is normal. And what I'm trying to show through the discussion that we're having is that you were very normal. You have you have your full intellectual functioning. It's all there, and it always was there, always. It's just being able to see it, being able to understand that just because you can't express it in the same way as the so-called normal population doesn't mean that you're up in less value. And so if you if you were going to give any advice to a teacher who had just starting off for the first time, what would you want the teacher to know about teaching someone with Asperger's? Maybe that it takes patience and like like you're not you, uh, you're probably not going to connect with them right away, but so long as you show patience and understanding of them and, you know, trying to, you know, understand where they're coming from, you know, and, you know, trying to make a connection with them by, you know, uh, by seeing where they're coming from, I think that's that's the first stop, really. You know, uh, to, to to like see yourself in other person's shoes, and know that it takes time, but eventually, you know, uh, eventually that person is going to show his full potential, his or her full potential. Yeah, one day. Um, obviously, being in that reliable program got a lot of that, probably more so in the Vagina program. Yes. Right? Yes, yes, definitely. But I should also note that when I went to university, you know, uh, I took a life skills program for for, for two years and you know, that was uh, called ELST, and that program was for people who, you know, had learning disabilities or other disabilities as well. And what that program, you know, uh, did was, was it kind of taught, you know, uh, people who had learning disabilities or other disabilities to like go out into the world and make a living for themselves to find a job to find a house and to find uh to find a life after university to like be more independent so yeah i took that for two years so do you think it would have been helpful if you had gotten that program in high school yes yes i i, I think so Ah, uh, so that's very different than what you were saying, for example, in Regina, where they wouldn't even let you out of the room, you know, and, and you know, keep you there because they want to keep you safe, right? But that didn't really help, did it? No, no. no whereas, like, if you, you know, and he has ELST program on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, on, uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I mean, sorry, uh, I would go out to work to volunteer, to, whether it was Superstore, uh, WBM restaurant, at, uh, at a video store, and a retirement home. They would just, you know, the teachers, they would just, uh, you know, drop me off there, or my 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 dad would, would drop me off there, and I would do like yeah, and and I would uh, work to, uh, do volunteer work around the kitchen, or you know, uh, or uh, in 
in the bakery at Tiber Store or, you know, uh, or my favorite part, obviously, was at the video store, you know, uh, helping, you know, uh, put all the videos back. <laughs> so that was obviously like it. Yeah. So, you know, ELSC, yeah. that program, it was kind of an independent, you know, uh, it, 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 like, like it, it, it was a program that the teens people was learning disabilities how to be independent. So I think that was most useful program for me. Yeah. And I think that in some ways, if you, if you were able to get those kinds of skills developed early on, that would be really helpful instead of just kind of floundering through your high school years and wondering yeah. what you do then. Okay, so this is really helpful, Major. I think this is a really important conversation that these students need to hear. I think that they probably may have some ideas now as to how to deal with someone who has Asperger's, especially as such a high functioning Asperger's like you. Your yeah, English was flawless. Your understanding of character. Your understanding of English literature was amazing. It was Thank very, you. very advanced. And it was a tough for me the, the first two yeah. years of high school. And I could yeah. not really like function properly at all. But eventually it got better. Like, you know, hopefully the students realize that. Yeah. yeah. I could, but it will get better. As you go on, it seems a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I knew you were struggling with a certain aspects of the English course. You were. You definitely were. Um, but I think that your interest in the movies really saved you. Because I think that that's where you understood how to analyze behavior. And you probably would not be able to develop the ability to be so relational if you didn't have that interest in the movie. Because you're always looking at characters and how people are talking and behaving and figuring out things about with the world, about life through those movies. In many ways, that really gave you the insight into human behaviors and relationships that you have now. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I think so as well, but, but it just took, took me a few years to fully read, fully oh. recognize, you know, uh, and, and to start making comparisons in the word or from, you know, uh, from English class or to a meeting I saw, or I think the first time it started occurring was back when was was in 2009 was when uh i watched uh, this movie called 2012 and that movie uh it was about the world you know coming to an end and i remember you know uh taking something from your class which was the survival of the fittest which was Darwin's, you know, theory yeah. of, of, of the survival of the fittest and how, you know, everyone wanted to survive. And then when I was watching that movie, you know, I saw it back to that. And then that was when I first, that was the first time I could remember me making a comparison to, you know, uh, something that I learned from high school. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So this has been a wonderful conversation. I hope to have many more. And I really hope that you not stop writing. You owe me a screenplay, Major. You owe me something here. Yeah. <laughs> I will think of something too. I will write a biopic about, you know, uh, my experience at, the, uh, at home one day. And, you know, ah. Wonderful, wonderful.